believe in God. Uh, you no longer believe in God, the Lord, our God. Where is he then? Why is he permitting Obama to get away with virtual murder of a nation? It's the slaughter of a nation. Why is he allowed to do it? Why is he allowed to commit criminal acts like going around the law? I don't care whether you're a liberal or a Democrat. It doesn't matter to me. He's going around the law, bringing in 100,000 H-1B visas in order to satisfy Zuckerface. He wants more cheap labor. Bill, Bill Gates wants cheap labor. No matter how many billions they have, they want cheaper labor. Why? Why? They're nuts. They have the gold disease. They're nuts. Then they hire immigration lawyers to work. I know who works for Facebook. I've looked up the company. I've seen it. I've seen how many immigration attorneys they have of Indian descent who are bringing them in by the plane load as fast as they can. And, you know, I'm a big, a big supporter of the Indian culture. How many years have I supported Indians on this, con on this show? From the beginning, I boasted about how proud I am of Im immigrants from India, that they come here and in one generation they're winning spelling bees, the kids, how smart they are. Well, now I wake up and I see that they're flooding America with as many Indian workers who are cheaper than American workers, and I say to myself, something's wrong with this picture. Very, very bad situation. You know, things change, and you have to be flexible with it. You can't put out the same story every day. That you Let's say my opinions of three years ago, they're not the same today. Everything's changed. Well, that opens up nothing. One call, 855-47282. Robert will now play a New Year's Eve song because I've lost Skype. I can't even look at him. The leaf uh, chipper is gone. This uh, Telos is working. Robert, play a New Year's Eve song. One go to break to it midnight, on the call. One minute to go, one minute to say goodbye before we say hello. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Every time I hear it, I remember one story my uncle told me. He hated Guy Lombardo. I didn't know anything about it. I was a kid. I sat at home New Year's Eve. I didn't go anywhere. I, what kids go out New Year's Eve? And I had an uncle who would come over. He's dead now. God rest his soul. Every New Year's Eve, the same story. He'd hear this song, and he would say that Guy Lombardo, and he'd get angry. Why? Something about he ran someone over, and he paid off a judge in New York. You know, I was the first I ever heard of anything about, like, a, an icon. I thought, that, see, as a kid, you don't know any of this stuff. It's the same with the kids who are graduating college. They see a nice guy who goes on Seinfeld, black guy, you know, first black president. They figure anyone who opposes him is a right-wing nut, racist. Then they wake up and they find out that the college graduates are being shafted by this nice guy, first black president. He's giving out 100,000 basically green cards, H-1B visas to undercut college graduates from getting a job in America. But they don't know. They won't, they'll won't. they blame Nixon for it. And the kids come out. They're so drugged. What else did I want? Oh, UK government is going to ban, may ban Trump from entering. That'll be, he, he and I won't be able to go there. UK government on petition to ban Trump. They got all of the communists and Muslims in England to sign a petition to ban Donald Trump. And the idiot who runs England says that visiting is a privilege, not a right. What a disappointment this David Cameron is. What a phony this one is. Some conservative. What a really embarrassed, what an embarrassment that they threw their own nation in the toilet like this. British government said that Trump has risked being banned from the UK over his comments about banning Muslims for entering the United States. Home Secretary Theresa May said that she had the authority to exclude a non-European economic area national from the U.K. if she considers their presence in the U.K. to be non-conducive to the public good. She's such a liar. She got Muslims marching around there saying, overthrow the queen, we'll put in Sharia law, we want you to wear a burqa, and they don't throw them out? Who is she kidding? They're all cowards. The entire government of England is an occupied government. It's an occupied, quizzling government. Quisling may be may as well be running England right now as the Quisling ran Norway after it was invaded by Hitler. Exclusion powers are very serious and are not lightly used, she said. You know, I'm banned from entering England, much to my dissatisfaction. It was a terrible thing that was done to me in 09. But I now wear it as a badge of pride because many famous Israeli generals are banned from England and now they want to ban Trump? 
Huh. Just shows you what they become. Prime Minister David Cameron slammed Trump's remarks. And uh, the Home Secretary, the Prime Minister has made clear that he completely disagrees with Donald Trump's remarks. The Home Secretary has said that Donald Trump's remarks in relation to Muslims are divisive, unhelpful, and wrong. Why doesn't she say the same, same things about jihadis who are living in England? Why doesn't she throw them out? Because she's a coward and a liar. She's a quizzling. We reject any attempts to create division? Oh, really? And the Muslims marching around saying, you know, the, the terrible things they say on a regular basis? Or who pray in a public square blocking traffic in England? A thousand of them get down in the middle of a street? They're not creating division? They're not marginalizing the British themselves? You should see what people say of this story on uh, Newsmax. Someone wrote, the kind of morons running the U.K. is the kind that panders to the Muslims that are slowly but surely taking over their country, just as they desire to take over the entire planet. The useful idiot mentality that preaches multiculturalism and that elected Obama is a suicidal mental disease that has infected many in the civilized world. Is a, you get the picture. Must be a listener to the show. These morons, Figaro writes, these morons were put in their offices by moron voters who were signing their own death warrant. It is amazing how stupid... People are running countries in the EU. Merkel brought million immigrants to Germany without any background check. 60% of young men with their cell phones. And who did Time Magazine name the person of the year? The communist potato face from East Germany, who was doing everything she can to destroy Germany. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. It is the Savage Nation. America is sitting here waiting nervously to see what the madman in the White House might do for the new year. He's done something already. New Year's surprise, Obama regulation to give work permits to at least 100,000 foreign college graduates who will work at much lower wages than U.S. employees. And yet U.S.-born college graduates who will not find a job because this criminal administration will bypass the law on immigration in order to satisfy the H-1B visas that have been demanded by Mark Zuckerface and others, don't even understand what's happening to them in this country because of the brainwashing. That's one of the topics. That's one of the topics. There are many others. It's a New Year's Eve show, so to speak. I mean, we know we're, we're near New Year's Eve. I mean, some parts of the world have credit. They've gone home, thank God. Like where? 134 on the West Coast, 434 on the East Coast. Plus six already. It's so not yet they didn't drop the ball on the Eiffel Tower. Dubai already had New Year's already. They engulfed the engulfed the terrorists gave them a little New Year's firecracker job. New Year's Eve where on the dateline. I used to go across the dateline. I don't travel across the dateline anymore. The closest I get is to eating dates or riding a J line. All right, let's go to the call. Is W B A P Molly, welcome to the show. What's on your mind, Molly? Um, yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I believe that the best show of yours this year was the one where you talked about death and the dying. A lot of people tend to avoid that subject, but you faced it head on. Uh, it's a very I don't remember the death and dying show. When, about when was that this year? When was that this year? I, I believe it was just a few weeks ago, wasn't it? I don't know. what move. I must have been depressed. What, 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 what was the conclusion on death and dying that you liked so much? Well, you talked about um, you, you talked about how a lot of people don't don't talk about it, how they don't think about it, how a lot of people just try to avoid it, how they believe that uh, in, in the United States, a lot of people tend to think that they're going to live forever. Oh, I was yeah, I was mentioning everyone buries it. it's like it's not going to happen to them, right? Yeah, yes, sir. So, so it, it, why did you find why did you find that of any interest? Hospice DNA, and I'm I'm actually younger than any of my colleagues. But Molly, why would you find the show on death and dying of any interest? What what interested you about that? Well, because um, as a hospice DNA, I, I face uh, death every day. All of my you know all of my patients. You're are, a you're a hospice nurse. Did you just say? CNA. It's a nurse's assistant. Oh, so you see people in the last stages of life. Yes, sir. What do you see? Can you summarize any of your observations? For the for the large national audience that's listening to us right now, um, surprisingly enough, 
I, I see a lot of peace. Um, uh, when I do, do any people look forward to passing? Is that what you're saying? They do. Um, if if they have, if they've come to terms with their mistakes, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you mean? You mean not because they're in such pain that they can't wait to to be relieved of it? You mean come to terms with the mistakes they made in their life? You mean they work it out with who? They talk to you? No, they, most of the time it's whenever they have worked it out with themselves. Um, it's it's. You mean let's say they're laying in their bed and they're at the last stages of their life. They're thinking about the things they did in their life that were wrong. You mean? Right, right. I I I've, I have two different kinds of, of patients. Uh, that's a good way to summarize it. And one of them are the patients that that are afraid to go. They don't want to go. And most of the time, those are the ones who haven't come to terms with what they've done wrong. They have a lot of regrets. And then there's the other set, and and those are the people who know that they did things wrong, and they've accepted that nobody's perfect, and they've come to terms with their imperfections, and they found forgiveness, and they're ready to to move on. They're ready to go to have have you have you in your working with dying people? I hate to go into this. On a New Year's Eve, you know, people don't want to talk about it. Have you seen people leave and go somewhere good? I believe so. I'm well, of course, we can only believe it. We don't know for sure. You know, the old light at the end of the tunnel uh, thing that we all hear about. But what do you actually think happens to the to the soul upon expiration of the body? Um, well, I'll, t I'll tell you, I had a dream. I, I'd been working in hospice for about six months, and I've, I'd seen many people that I'd gotten very close to pass away. As, as a CNA, I spend um, about an hour to two hours a day with, with each patient, and so I, I get very close to them. And about six months into my career, I had a dream one night, and um, several of my patients were in a parking lot. And it was late at night, and they were all talking to each other. And none of them had known each other in life, but they were all standing in this, this parking lot. And I remember I drove by them, and they all looked at me, and they smiled, and, and they waved. Um, and they were happy. You know, they, they weren't... Oh, uh, that's kind of a wish-fulfillment fantasy, and, and Psych 101 will teach you that you're just... You're trying to put together the horror that you see into some nice little package. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking your dreams, but dreams can often be wish-fulfillment fantasies. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. But I, I think that that it does kind of show my, my beliefs. I don't know exactly, you know, what happens, um, and I try to keep. Are, are you are you afraid to die yourself? I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid to leave behind the people that I love. Well, it's in a way of all flesh. I mean, it's going to happen. Exactly. Eventually. I I look forward to um, exploring something different, a different form, a different place. I'm not personally. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking forward to any of that. I'll fight death to the last second. See, my culture is different. I don't accept it. I'm not a hippie. I'm not a Buddhist, I'm an American Buddhist. They have a misinterpretation. They welcome death. They embrace it. You know what? Good luck to them. Let them all embrace it, all the hippies. I don't embrace it. We fight it. We tell death to go you know where. When death comes, you tell them to go visit someone else. That's the Carpathian Russian way. We don't welcome death and embrace it. We fight it every step of the way. So, I mean, it's a different culture. That's all I can say. Absolutely, yes. Now, you're a sweetheart. You're a lovely person. Okay. How old did you say How how old did you say you are? I'm 20. Oh, you're such a sweet person. Do you have a boyfriend? I'm married. Really? How long have you been married? Um, It'll be two years in June. God bless you. Children? Thank you. No, do you have children yet? No, no, not yet. We're I'm I'm in school right now. I'm uh, pre med, so we don't want to have any kids. Oh, you're a lovely. You're going to be a great, great doctor, Molly. All I can send you is my congratulations, my thanks from the radio waves, and send you a copy of my book, Government Zero. Molly, God bless you for calling. What a beautiful call that one. Never expected it. Just a beautiful. It's like you can breathe easy. You hear me? Breathe easy. You hear that? I actually I felt myself like sigh with relief that something good happened to. <laughs> Today, <laughs> every computer I have in front of me is failing. My stories computer is down. My call screen is down. My Skype is down. The only thing working is the microphone right now, my brain. Maybe that's all you need in radio is a microphone and a brain and a gift, a gift of gift. You know, everything's a miracle when you think about it. What if I wake up one day and I have no voice? 
Or what if I wake up one day and have a 